Hey there YouTube, I am Wheelchair21 and today is a brand new Doyle's DVDs and it's none other than one of the most recent releases from Shout Factory, Digimon Adventure Try Reunion. This is the first movie in the 5-6 to six part OVA series or OVA films being released as a part of the 15th anniversary for Digimon Adventure in Japan. The box art here shows that it's using the original poster for the film with Omegamon and Alphamon fighting each other, with Yamato and Taichi riding alongside. Now, honestly, I'm going to go by their American names, so I may slip up here and there and call Omegamon Omnimon probably quite a bit, whereas Yamato and Tai, well, I'm just going to keep calling them Matt and Tai just for simplistic reasoning. Now, this is a Blu-ray, DVD, and digital uh, combo pack. It also has a little sticker that informs, you know, the buyers that it includes both Japanese and English audio, returning original cast, voice cast bonus, as well as new interviews, and so on and so forth. So, for the front of the box, pretty good, especially due to the fact that this is roughly $15, is kind of really good to have, you know, Blu-ray, DVD, digital download, as well as, you know, at least some special features and both audios, especially coming from Shout Factory. And the back of the box shows... Tai and Agumon hugging, Greymon versus Kuagumon, garbage and garbage. I mean Mako and Makomon, because these guys needed to exist and provide a lot of effective stuff for this episode. No, they don't. They 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 don't. It's just all build up and foreshadowing for the rest of the movies where they're more pivotal goddamn characters too. Anyways, it talks about how Tai, look how big you've grown. And also mentions that it's been six years since the original adventure, as well as it's been only three years since the conclusion of Adventure Zero Two, with, you know, Kari's second generation Digidestins fighting Malo Myotismon, and at some point, the gate to the digital world mysteriously closed. Dot 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 retcon ready or not, here it comes. So for the exterior, pretty good. Comes with the cardboard slip protector. Inside, we have our Blu-ray, we have our DVD, the digital slip I already took out and used and threw that out, and inside we have our actual cast, most of the English cast, there's barely any mention of the Japanese cast in this interior cover slip, as well as you see Ty's eyes. So, pretty Night, nice and snug. Alright, so now we're going to be talking about Digimon Adventure Try. The actual film, the difference between the sub and the dub, as well as the special features. So, first off, I'm going to address the elephant in the room. This movie, even though it is canon, it doesn't feel canon for me. This is my opinion. It's never felt canon thus far. It loosely retcons and builds off of the in-between of the Melomyotismon fight and the epilogue. And the issue I have with it is they rewrite a few things that occurred. Now, from what people have tried to deduce is that most likely the rewrite that is conflicting for Western fans is that due to sub versus dub, that could be the reason... However, I've watched Digimon Adventure Zero 2, and I've watched it, you know, dubbed as a kid and back and forth as a teen. It expresses that the world as a whole, after Malamidesmon's defeated, more people start becoming Digidestins and acquiring a Digimon partner. So when this movie picks up and the world is closed off, the original, like, well, I shouldn't say the original, but the second gen guys, except for TK and Kari are wiped out and gone, and, like, the world doesn't really really remember any of the digital disasters or digital phenomenons, or the world doesn't have that many Digimon, really is mind-boggling, and it kind of irks the shit out of me, as well as the fact that Reunion and its sequel just barely, like, are the tip of the iceberg in what is the entire plot and narrative of these movies or OVAs thus far. And it's kind of still irking because it's not until like the third and fourth film that everything kind of just finally 
is revealed. Like, a lot of stuff is really revealed in the third and fourth films, which people can go watch on Crunchyroll. I mean, cheap subscription fee. You can get it. Hell, you can get a package deal, I think, with the WWE Network, so you can get two in one. So, hey, I, I should have actually done that just recently. Why the hell didn't I do that? Because I'm an idiot. Nevertheless, aside from how it starts off and the fact that, you know, its sequel kind of still leaves me going, uh, there should have been more exposition on what's really going on than it's a mystery. What's going on? Why is Alphamon attacking us? What is wrong with these infected Digimon? Why, 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 why? Was kind of already annoying. However, cutting to what's going on now, you have Ty and Matt trying to get people to go to their events. Ty has a soccer game coming up. Matt has a concert coming up. And they're kind of just trying to get people to go. And they're kind of trying to play favorites, it seems. Not with just the rest of their bands, but they're really still seeming to fight over Sora, which seems to be like a dead-end deal ever since... Adventure Zero 2. So, a lot of regression occurs, which kind of is annoying, that a lot of their characters have seemingly regressed, don't explain why the regression occurs, or what's really going on. And so, as the day goes on, and Ty has his soccer game, Matt has his concert, a weird digital occurrence happens, and Kawagamon is sighted going throughout the city. And Ty has a run-in with Quagamon, and they kind of have a game of cat and mouse until Quagamon almost kills Ty, and Agumon appears, allowing them to fight and battle as Greymon and Quagamon. The battle spills out to Haneda Airport, where the actual fight takes place, and then the rest of the Digimon show up, and their Digidestins all group up, and they fight. And they fight Quagamon, as well as the other two Quagamon that appear, and they sort of find out that the government's kind of doing this huge conspiracy, especially with the fact that one of their teachers is a part of this government plan to try to stop the infected Digimon from getting to the digital, from the digital world to the real world and infecting the real world, which kind of doesn't make sense even in this movie. It just, like I say, it's the tip of the iceberg. Meanwhile, you find out Mimi is moving back to Japan, as well as Tai has a new neighbor, who, ironically enough, is a new student as well in their classroom, as well as also is a Digidestin. Yeah, Meku and Mekumon, or Meko and Mekomon, whatever, I don't care, show up, and, you know, they have to find the cat, finding out it's a Digimon due to the fact Alphamon's there trying to kill the thing. So, as Matt and Ty bitch and argue, they eventually decide to use Omegamon, and the two duke it out. And our movie ends. So, one of the issues I have is that the movie is very slow and cut and dry when you watch it in its original audio. It feels very dull, it feels very boring, and not a whole lot goes on. Then, when the English dub takes over, they kind of do what Saban did and try to add color to the dialogue and make it that you know, there's something witty, there's at least some kind of banter to keep you entertained and focused on what's going on and keep the viewer's attention. Now, the one thing I also say that's better about the dub than the original audio is that they actually went out to try to get the original cast. They didn't just stop at the Digimon partners like Toei did when they did, you know, the Japanese audio. They went out and they tried to get everyone, and at least a good portion of them are all there, whether they had to choose a different role in the film due to the changing of their voices, or the fact that they couldn't just be contacted to be a part to reprise their role. Because that is the case with TK's voice actor. He now is so used to using his deeper and darker voice, whether it be Hat and Claws and Bleach Akihiko in in uh, Gundam Iron-Blooded Orphans, for example, that he couldn't recreate his teenage TK voice to be TK, so he's actually the teacher that I'm talking about, who's actually one of my favorites in the abridged, because Yagami... I'm I'm sorry, but I really do love the abridged because it points out a lot of the issues I have with this film in general. It really does. 
It's not just because it's just funny. It actually speaks to me on a whole new level than this film does. But, like I said, due to the fact that they get most of the original cast back for the English dub, it's phenomenal and incredible. It makes me really enjoy the film a whole lot more. Now, the one thing, or I should say the two things that I find kind of ironic is I never knew how good Braveheart would be with the dub until technically now, because the abridged doesn't count, because they use pe pe Pekel's, Pelux, uh English cover. But this, hearing Braveheart and, and you know, the dub together was, like, phenomenal. Also, Kyle Haybera's Greymon. Damn. So, one thing I gotta say is, I, I'm guessing at first, Toei tried to approach Saban Brands, maybe, to bring it over, but Saban was like, nah, I'm just gonna, you know, censor it and cut it all to hell and not leave it, you know, intact like they wanted to. So, I guess they, like, had a falling out, or they just have all licensing rights. So, they knew fans, I'm guessing, wanted to hear the original Digimon theme in this movie, but they couldn't get the licensing rights to it or whatever. That's just my theory to it. That they tried to make a knockoff bootleg that is just laughably stupid. Like, it's real bad that, like, it first made me, like, almost want to, like, just fast-forward the entire opening. But then, like, listening to the entire thing, it just felt like one of those uh, South American covers of the actual American theme, like, that you can listen to on iTunes. It was just so, so terrible. It was... It, it has me cracking up even now. I just... I enjoy it. It's so stupid that I like it. So, the special features, though, with the interviews with the ca returning cast, new cast, and also the fan Phantom of it, uh, screening similar to, I guess, Funimation, you know, uh, events like they do with Dragon Ball Z, Resurrection of F, and Attack on Titan. Like, the screening kind of felt similar to, like I say, Funimation's version, but when they did the full sit-down interview compilation thing where it was, like, jumping from actor to actor due to what questions asked and how they answered, was really cool and incredible how quite a few of the actors who were originally connected to Digimon we're still connected to Digimon and glad that the series is still going on. As well as the new actors saying about how, like, they either grew up with it or knew of it and weren't really a fan until they got the role and saw that it's still popular to this day because a lot of other voice actors didn't think it was that phenomenal compared to, unfortunately, like, Pokemon and all the other rival genres or series out there that kind of have the whole, you know, have a partner monster or collecting monster gimmick. And the thing that is still the best part is the whole, like, humble and gracious attitude from Ty's voice actor. Because he got out of voice acting and then started doing con cons and fans just wanted him back, especially for this film, that he tried hard to get back and he made it back. And he was just so happy to do the whole thing. I mean, I'm just happy to give him, you know, another paycheck because of royalties of buying this film. That's one thing I gotta say is that seeing at least, like, Ty be so animated about it because he hasn't been doing voice actor acting all these years is really incredible and shows that he still loves this because this was, like, his big breakout role. Whereas, like, the other guys, they were just, like, happy that it was still going on. They were probably just answering questions for another paycheck, but I still respect them for it because that's their damn job. That it's just, like, having them back is, like, a real nostalgia. And Toei didn't really even try. I'm sorry, but they didn't really try for the original audio. That's why the dub actually went over the sub because I've watched both and I've enjoyed both. And it's just... The thing is, how you can do it better for the dub is incredible. I mean, the only knock about it still is that laughable, terrible, you know, opening. But that's about it. I mean, you get special features, you get Blu-ray, DVD, digital download for about $15 to $20. And the other parts are out on Amazon. You can also go watch most of the movies now as they, like, almost release in Japan or a few months after they release in Japan via Crunchyroll streaming services. So, I mean, there's so many ways to watch and enjoy Digimon Adventure Try. I mean, personally for me, I'll just keep watching the dubs, 
I don't think I'm even going to watch the fifth movie now and the sixth movie. I'm just going to wait till we get a dub, as well as I'm just going to go keep on enjoying the abridged, because why the hell not? Anyways, I'm Wheelchair21. You can find this video here on my YouTube channel or over at probably HeroTaku.com and Hero Club. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and I'll see you all next time.